Good morning, Axe family, and welcome to our virtual Sunday service. We are so grateful you've joined us to lift God's name today, and we thank you for the continued support. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube and follow us on social media at Axe Santa Monica to stay up to date on all things happening. And if you would like to give to our church, you could do so by going online to axsantamonica.org and by clicking on the donating tab. And you can also give by mail and send it in a P.O. Box 7217 in Santa Monica, California. We look forward to receiving your gifts. Now we just want to give a quick shout out to Jocelyn who delivered our message last week. Thank you so much, Jocelyn, and it was so great to hear from you. And this week's message is Philippians 1.6. It says, be confident in this. He who starts the good work within you will carry it on until the completion of Jesus Christ. Friends, this reminds us that God fulfills his promises, he completes his work, and he doesn't abandon his plan for us. He himself is enough. And remember to stay grateful and humble. You will start to see the blessings to start pouring into your life. And remember, the Axe family is always here for you and we would love to pray for you. So feel free to send in any prayer requests through our social media pages or through our website. Now let's get our hearts ready for Pastor Joe's word with some praise. Good morning, Axe. Thank you for joining us today. As we enter into this holiday season, let's remember the true reason for the season. Jesus came here as a babe to show us the way to give us the blueprint of life, but ultimately to show us the ultimate love. So as we enter into this season, even though we've had a tough year and we've faced a lot of obstacles, remember what this season is all about so that we can carry it throughout the year.
family, we're back to Christmas again. This is now the third in the series on Christmas. Uh, I'm excited about this particular message today. And the reason I am is because we're going to talk about the pedigree of the king. You know, a lot of people don't get why Jesus Christ is celebrated uh, as the Christ of Christmas. And I want to give you some technical information on that today. So I want you to work with me here. Uh, maybe not turn to as many scriptures with me as I'm going to go through today, but write them down. Write them down and write them down in the order that I'm going to give them. Because I think you're going to find it helpful when you take your private study time and look at why is Jesus Christ, why is his bloodline so important? Why does he have to come out of the line of David? And that's what's going to make Christmas more meaningful uh, to you. Uh, so from a technical perspective, but our launch pad is coming out of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. And we're going to work through that throughout the message, but I'm going to bring some other passages in. Here, Isaiah says this in chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For to us, a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David 
and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The excitement of God is going to make this happen. The love of God is going to make this happen. That's the promise that we have. So let's look at the pedigree of the king. If this child that's going to be born is really going to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords, what's his pedigree? That's how we're going to identify the true Christ of Christmas. That's how we're not going to fall in this trap of not knowing what Christmas is really all about. I want you to know the person that we celebrate at Christmas. So the family background of this child that Isaiah speaks of is important to investigate because it proves that God has done over the annals of time exactly what God said he would do. There's just a very small piece that is left to be fulfilled. Man may not believe it, but that doesn't matter. The fact that God said it and God did it is the only thing that matters. If we remove Santa Claus, presents giving back and forth, lights and Christmas trees from Christmas, where would the excitement be? All those things that we've come to love and know as Christmas, even from being a child. Many very devout Christians, uh, not to mention people who do not have a relationship with the Lord, have a hard time focusing on the true meaning of Christmas. They have difficulty getting their heads wrapped around that. The worldview of Christmas has channeled our focus through lines at department stores, uh, on the internet, delivery dates. It has taken our focus off of the very attention of the fact that it's a bloodline that's more important than a department store line. Yeah, the bloodline of that king, of that baby, of that Messiah. That's what's so important here. The true excitement of Christmas comes when we understand the ancestry of Jesus Christ, the very Christ of Christmas. So first of all, God's great promise in Isaiah chapter nine and uh, verse six, the A part of the verse only, he says, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Let's look at that A part first. The oldest and most popular idea of the Messiah was that God would send to his people a king, a king such as David had been, a king uh, who would deliver his people, a king who would restore the greatness to Israel and lead them to a glory such as had never been known to man before. After King David had won all of his wars, and there were many, he praised God to the point of getting naked even and dancing before the Lord. He rested in his kingdom and God gave Nathan a word to give David. Listen to this word, 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 16. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. See, that's the promise directly to King David that God had given him. That his bloodline would sit on his throne forever. I know we're so mixed up right now in our society. We think that presidents are kings. We think that kings are, 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 are or prime ministers are kings. Benjamin Netanyahu is not the king of Israel. Jesus is. Yeah, look, I don't want to offend anyone, but I don't want you to miss the point. You got to trace them all the way back without missing one generation to the very lineage of King David. That's the person that's going to sit on his, on his throne. So this, this is God's great promise to his people. 
the bloodline of King David would be preserved for the great deliverer, the ruler, uh, the Messiah who is yet to be born. And in that case has now since come. Journey through the promise with me. Uh, just jot these passages down. This is a dream of Isaiah that God had given him in Isaiah 9 and 7. He calls his name. He gives us his great characteristics. He, he says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. In other words, um, what was known at that time as David's kingdom was David's kingdom. But the scripture says here that his kingdom is going to broaden. It's going to get so large that there is not going to be an end to it. So we're seeing now how uh, it's beginning to spread, even in our time. So this promise, and he says, Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the host, of the Lord of hosts, will perform this. The greatness of God is going to make this happen. Nothing man can do is going to make Christmas a reality. I don't care how many lights you put on the tree, how many ornaments you hang, how many photos of memories you have, how many presents you send out, how many you receive in, how many Christmas cards you mail, how many you get back. That does not determine the true meaning of Christmas. It's amazing to see this in the scripture. It's amazing. And to hear the words that, that Isaiah speaks, that it's the zeal of the Lord that's going to perform this. Look at Isaiah 11 and 1. He says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. Now, listen to that. A rod, something stronger than we've ever seen is going to come out of the stem of Jesse. You know who Jesse is? Jesse is the father of King David. Now we talk about stem cell research today as if it's something new. But here the angel of the Lord speaks and makes it clear that this is going to be the stem of Jesse. In other words, Jesus Christ is the very stem cell of Jesse. He's coming out of the same place that King David came from. And he's proclaiming it right here. He's connecting science and faith together. He's allowing, he's allowing science to justify faith in this particular case. We need to get our heads wrapped around it. Uh, science is not one thing over here and faith another thing over here. Theology brings them together in a very practical way when you look at the promises of God. He makes it clear in that statement. And then, not just that, but God also gave the prophet Jeremiah a dream. You know, Jeremiah was that, that, that guy that was always crying and weeping and nobody would listen to him. So here God says in Jeremiah 23 and 5, in spite of all the things that's going on in the world right now, Jeremiah, in spite of all of the craziness that you're experiencing in Israel today, Jeremiah, this is what God says in Jeremiah 23 and 5. He says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. There's that branch spoken of through that stem of Jesse. There's that same branch. He's connecting the dots for us. He says that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. Do you think someone else is going to bring justice to this earth? Do you think that who we vote for and who we put in office or who we take out of office or who we deny the privilege of continuing to serve us, do you really think that's going to make a difference? Jesus has a plan and God has initiated it. He says that he will give him authority. He will give him rule. And in the midst of all that trouble that Jeremiah was experiencing at that time, God raises this comforting word. That Jeremiah, you're not going to have to depend on the folk that's ruling now. I'm sending a ruler. I'm sending one straight from myself. I just love that because it was later in Jeremiah 33 and 17 that we read, For thus says the Lord, 
David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. He's telling us in that promise, he's saying that David is never going to like someone in his line sitting on the throne. So we just have to find the one. And there's only one in all of the scriptures. I don't care how much you search it. There's only one that can be traced all the way back completely to the line of David, that bloodline. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the reason for the season. Jesus. That's the celebration of Christmas. Jesus. That's the light to the world. Jesus. That's the truth. That's what it's all about. It's not about a little baby being born. It's about a God that's going to rule. It's about a God that's going to bring, bring justice and, 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 and a God that's going to bring judgment. It's about a God that's going to pay back the folk that have done you wrong in your life. It's really about that. That's Christmas. That's payback. That's Christmas. It's a good thing, in other words. So then we see that Amos also had a dream. All of these prophets, they were all telling the same story. What's interesting about their story is they weren't talking about the church. See, we celebrate Christmas in the church. We put lights up and trees up and all that sort of stuff, a baby in a manger. We have programs where the kids come and tell us these little stories about the baby Jesus. But, but you see, God wasn't talking to the church. He was talking to Israel. He was letting them know that there's a greater fulfillment that's coming. And we need to understand that as well. So here he gives these prophets these dreams. We have Amos in his dream in chapter 9 and verse 11. Amos says, On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. God is looking for a celebration from his people. He knows that ruin has come to us. He knows that we've been torn down and drugged down and put down and even put out. He knows that. But he says, look to me, the author and finisher of your faith, because I will restore you one day. Friends, we're not going to always be down. We're not going to always be out. Christmas is coming and the Savior, he's the one that's going to raise us up. That is what we're celebrating we're celebrating a soon coming and imminently coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I don't want anybody to miss the true meaning of Christmas. I like what he says here that he will repair the damages that have been done. Some of you have been so hurt in your lifetime. Different things in life have hurt you. People have hurt you. People that you interact with have hurt you. Family has also played a role in hurting us. But you know what the single most important thing is? That this Savior that is spoken of by this prophet, it's clear that he's coming to restore something, to rebuild something, to fix the damages, fix the brokenhearted. That's what he's coming for. That's the story of Christmas. That's what Christmas is all about. Zechariah had a dream. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8, he says, In that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David. I don't care how feeble you are, how beat down you are, how drug out down you are. The most important thing for you to know is when Jesus returns, you are going to be strong. He's coming to defend you. He says, And the house of David shall be like God like the angel of the Lord before them. What a restoration that's going to be. Can you imagine as much going on in the Middle East these days, wars on all around them, people putting bombs into their property and their space, and they're doing the same, all this nonsense going on, and we're going to send someone there to resolve it all, to fix it all? No, no. The one that's going to fix it all happens to be named Jesus Christ. That's who's going to fix it all. The Christ of Christmas. The greatest Christmas is going to come to the people of God that have denied the fact that he is the Messiah that's already come. They're going to have the greatest shock of their lives. And then Hosea had a dream. That poor prophet, if you read his story, so challenging a life that he lived. 
But in Hosea 3 and 5, it says that the day would come when the children of Israel would return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. Friends, they're not going to be seeking the King David that they knew then. They're going to be seeking the new David, <laughs> that stem of Jesse. Uh-huh. That's who they're going to be seeking. Christ, the Christ of Christmas. That's who they're going to be seeking. Ezekiel heard God speak in a dream. And he heard the words of God in Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 23 through 24. And the Lord said, I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, my servant David. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And in verse 24, he says, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken. Friends, that promise is not coming from man. That promise comes directly from an almighty God one that you can trust. You can trust God to fix your broken places. He's on his way back. I I don't care how much you've been denied, put down, thrown out, locked up, chained, whatever. I'm telling you that God is going to loose those chains one day. He has promised it to us. Because the issue is that those prophets, while they didn't speak to the church, They spoke to the line of David. They spoke to Israel. But here's what's key to know. Those promises apply to the church. Do you know why? Because Jesus has already come and died. And because of his bloodshed, we are grafted in to the very, to become the very children of Abraham. We're in it. So our hearts too are going to be renewed. We too will be built up in places where we've been torn down. I just think it's a wonderful message. But yet, We need to see the fulfillment of God's great promise. And that fulfillment is is, is right in that Isaiah chapter 9 that I started with at the very beginning. Look at verse 7 of Isaiah chapter 9. He says, of the increase of his government, he says, and the peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the host, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Look at the B part just before it, because you know, when you read the Hebrew, you got to kind of read it backwards to really get it. Look at the B part before he gives us all those characteristics of God. He says, and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince, of peace. So we know what we're looking for. We're looking for someone that's going to bring peace. Now, if you really want to see the, um, the line of Jesus, you want to track it all the way back for yourself, open up the gospel of Matthew chapter one and just read chapter one of Matthew and see for yourself that this gospel starts with the very genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. It even says it just like that. And then you go all the way back, all the way back. And you say, oh my God, he did come from David. And that's exactly what God is talking about. Gabriel made a promise to Mary. That's Jesus's mom, his earthly mom. In Luke's gospel. And the promise is that the Lord will give to the child that she will bear the throne of his father, David. Yeah, Gabriel delivers that message to Mary that that throne that belonged to David will be given to her child, the one that is called Jesus the Christ. You'll find that message in Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. Paul speaks of Jesus Christ who was descended from David according to the flesh in Romans chapter 1 and verse 3. So we see this is brought right on over into the New Testament because I realize that I've got some Old Testament folk and some New Testament folk and some don't believe in that Testament and some don't want to accept this Testament. Well, that's the crossover. Jesus was the first of crossovers. You know how when folk are singing songs and in that whole music world, they have crossover songs. Yeah, Jesus is our crossover. He's our bridge over troubled waters. He's the one that's coming back to receive us unto himself. He's our savior. 
He is the Christ of Christmas. So in the book of Revelation, John is on the Isle of Patmos and he's writing as the angel of the Lord is speaking to him. And in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16, John writes, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify these things to the churches. Now the church is brought in. He says, I am the root and the offspring of David. Did you get that? Uh, Revelation 22 and 16. Yeah, well, you should turn there. You should turn. This is just something you really need to get. Watch what he says. He says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. You know what that means? That Jesus is the new day. He's the bright and morning star. You see that star at the break of day. Just before the daybreak comes, that star opens up heaven for us. Jesus is telling us that he is the new dawn. He's the dawn of the new day for you and I. So what have we learned today? What's our learning outcome? What is significant? What is the significance of all of this information? Because I realize it's a lot of reading of scripture. But friends, I have to share that with you because that's what's going to help you settle in your heart who Jesus is and what Christmas really is all about and how we should be celebrating it and why we should be celebrating it. Not celebrating department store lines. And, and I realize that we're not doing that today because of our own situation in the marketplace. But I want you to understand that we need to celebrate the bloodline. It is the bloodline of King David where we find our Messiah, where we find our deliverer, where we find our Savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. And it is Jesus that speaks it in Revelation to John. So what have we learned and what is significant about it? This is God whom we believe for salvation. That is the God of Christmas. That is the Christ of Christmas. He says it so plainly in Isaiah 9 and 6 and the B part. He gives us the names that he will be called by. This is his essential characteristics that we need to understand and know. So let me just run through them very quickly for you. And let me also justify them with a passage of scripture to support that. He says he shall be called wonderful. Well, Paul wrote about that in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Paul said, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God has, was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, and seen by angels and preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. That's Christ. That's Christ. That's the Christ of Christmas. So if he's been received up in glory, then you and I need to be looking for him to come back again because the scripture says that he was going to return. He has a lot to fulfill out of all that was said to the Jews in the Old Testament. But you and I will be a part of that fulfillment. And that should be our message about Christmas. That's why it's so important when you write a Christmas card this Christmas, put a verse of scripture in it. Tell them who the Christ of Christmas is, especially to your friends that don't know the Lord. This is our assignment. But not only that, he said he was a counselor. Paul wrote in Colossians 2 and 3, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Do you need wisdom? Do you need to impart wisdom to your children or grandchildren or great grandchild? Do you need to impart wisdom? Get your wisdom from the word of God. Paul says that in Jesus Christ is all wisdom and knowledge. He knows everything. There's a passage of scripture in this book for every occasion and everything that you go through in life. There's nothing you will experience or have experienced that's not in this book. Friends, know the book. Pick it up and read it. I realize I've given you a lot of scripture to go through today, but read them all. They will help you establish in your heart who Jesus really is and why it's important to celebrate Jesus and only Jesus at Christmas time. There are so many people, so many churches are just mixed up about that. Some people want to celebrate who Jesus is and his birth. Some don't. Some people don't even acknowledge. They call themselves people of faith, but they don't even acknowledge who Jesus is. There are all kinds of uh, these organizations out there. I don't know what to call them. 
but they're very mixed up about the bloodline of David. They're very mixed up. They're so afraid that the Jews are going to do something wrong. But you know, they've already done their wrong. God has forgiven them. He's sending his son back again. They're going to receive him this time. Yeah. So we have to understand that. God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. Uh, I like what the writer says, Isaiah said, he's a mighty God. <laughs> I wish I could say that a lot loud. He's a mighty God. That's right. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what he is called. The psalmist says in Psalms 24 and 8 that, who is the king of glory? That's the question he's asking. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. That's our king of glory. That's who our king of glory is. And then he's also called by Isaiah the everlasting father. What a beautiful title to have. That alone marks him as wonderful. To be our everlasting father. Yes, he's a child as some might see it. But yet the child is an everlasting father according to John 10 and 30. That's amazing when you see this. Earthly kings uh, leave their people very early in life. But he's an everlasting father. He's a king that's never going to leave his people. Even when he returned to glory, he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell his people on earth so that we could be comforted and always be with him. He's always present with us. He's not only omnipresent, but he's always with us. He's everywhere, but he's always everywhere. That's the God of Christmas. And then, what about this world that we live in today? Such turmoil in so many corners of our world. But here we read in Isaiah that he is the Prince of Peace. Boy, do we need some peace in this world today. Do we need peace in our politics? Yes. Do we need peace in the pandemic that this world is going through right now? Yes. Do we need peace even among our families and our friends and our loved ones? Yes. Yes. Everybody's acting as if we're confused and yet everybody's acting as if they know the right thing. The right thing to do. But friends, I'm here to tell you that the Prince of Peace is who we celebrate at Christmas. Jacob called his sons together. And he told them in Genesis chapter 49 and 10, these words, he says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between their feet, until Shiloh comes, until the Prince of Peace shows up. That's what he means, until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. We're going to all bow. The scripture says one day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Friends, we're going to arrive at that point. That's really celebrating Christmas. Even already, he's our peace. According to Paul's writing in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14, he says, for he himself is our peace. Talking about Jesus Christ. That's our peace. I don't care what's going on in your life today, how confusing, how disappointed you are, how hurt you are. Whatever you're going through, you can find peace. Even though the world is in turmoil, there's still peace. And the peace is the peace of Christmas. And his name is Jesus Christ. Will you accept him today? Will you accept Jesus Christ today? The scripture says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Friend, would you ask the Lord to come into your life today? Don't celebrate another Christmas without Jesus. He's the reason for the season. Accept him today. Allow me to pray for you. Lord, I just lift up everyone under the sound of my voice today. I lift them up because, Lord, we need to know who you are. We need to understand better who you are. So, Father, would you enter the hearts of your people today? Cause us to want to spread the truth about the true Christmas, the true gift at Christmas time, the gift of salvation that has already come. Oh, Father, we look forward to your return. Because you said when you come back again, you're coming back to collect those of us that believe in you. So, Lord, I pray for salvation all over the world. I pray for peace upon this earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.
Jesus is. 